Please, will you go outside now, please? We sh should be outside, yeah. This table needs to come out. We need this table outside. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's great, lovely. Yeah. So, um, so if you stand here, please. That's it. And um, that's it. You stand, stand. And we stand. You stand there. Okay. Then we'll just wait till they come out. Let's just get the right page. Careful, these don't blow out. Right, this should be getting here. This is it. Right, so you hold it like that for me, okay? Make sure that the wind doesn't blow the pages over. Let's wait till they come out now. Right then, so um, I think that's about it. Makes In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, on this most sacred night in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the Church calls upon her sons and daughters scattered throughout the world to come together to watch and pray if we keep the memorial of the Lord's Paschal Mystery in this way, listening to his word and celebrating his mysteries, then we shall have the sure hope of sharing his triumph over death and living, and living with him in God. So we'll just come over to the fire now. Just you stand there. Just, we'll come over. Let us pray. O oh God, who through your Son bestowed upon the faithful the fire of your glory. S sanctify this fire, we pray, and grant that by these paschal celebrations we may be so inflamed with heavenly desires that with minds made pure we may attain festivities of an ending splendor through Christ our Lord. Amen. So, if you put... Um, let me leave this then now. So I'm going to need someone to, if someone could hold this for me, please. And if you, you have to put your things down. Roy, well, maybe you, you can, if you can manage like that, that's fine. Okay, so you stand forward. Okay, so we'll do the top one. Um, uh, Christ just said, oh yes, I need the scriber. It's the scriber I need first. Sorry about that. Oh, sorry. It's the scriber. Here we go. Christ yesterday and today. We've got the vertical line. Christ yesterday and today. The, be the beginning and the end. The Alpha and the Omega. All, all time belongs to him. And, and, and all ages, and all the ages, to him be glory and power through every age and forever Amen. Just put that, put that on there, that's fine. Right. By his holy, number one, then, so it goes at the top. By his holy, number two in the middle, and, and glorious wounds, Yes, 
rooms and uh, may Christ the Lord number three. May Christ the Lord. Number four. May Christ the Lord guard us. And protect us, amen. That's a heart, that's fine. So we're going to turn to the next page. So what we need to do now is to take the coals out. So hold that page so it doesn't blow. All right, that's it. That's all right, it's fine. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Have we got the, um, the, the the tongs now? Thank you. Right, you need to stand over here. Up a bit, hold it up a bit. It's one down there. Spread them out a bit. That's it, that's fine. Wonderful. So where do we put the like that? So the in incense boat now. So um, if you get the, uh, I'll, get, I'll get it, don't worry. Bless this incense, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Put that down. You're going to have to carry that as well. All right, now, we've got to try and light this off the fire. Um, we might, uh, I think we've, I don't want to destroy the wick, so I wonder whether, we, it's all right, I just, no, I, I, I think what we'll do is, can we have that candle? See that two-inch candle on there? That one-inch, no, for you. We use that. We use that. Thanks for offering. It's that candle on there. Thank you. Right. We need to get a flame, you see. Okay. God, that stay. <sighs> Dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds. I'm just going to, I don't want this to blow out. The light of Christ, thanks be to God. Turn that light out if you can. Well, if you, if you think it's for safety, well, I don't know whether you should leave it on. Okay, enter the middle. Just, just, stay, just stay here. Just stay here a And How many times do we do it? Go to the middle, do we? Yeah, go on, go to the middle. Okay, 
just stop there, stop there. Wait till we come in. Of Christ. of Christ All right, we need to light these um, you haven't got your candle with you now so we need to pass the light Share the light around now, please. The uh, light of the peoples. Okay. Just bow. And just stay where you are. now. Thank you. Exalt, let them exalt the hosts of heaven. Exalt, let angel ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound aloud a mighty king's triumph. Be glad, let earth be glad as glory floods her, ablaze with light from her eternal King. Let all corners of the earth be glad, knowing an end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, Arrayed with the lightning of his glory, let this holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the peoples. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just with ardent love of mind and heart 
and with devoted service of our voice to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father, and Jesus Christ our Lord, his Son, his only begotten, who for our sake paid Adam's debt to the eternal Father, and pouring out his own dear blood, wiped clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. These then are the feasts of Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, whose blood anoints the doorposts of believers. This is the night when once you led our forebears, Israel's children, from slavery in Egypt, and made them pass dry shod through the Red Sea. This is the night that with a pillar of fire banished the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now throughout the world sets Christian believers apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin, leading them to grace and joining them to his holy ones. This is the night when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. Our birth would have been no gain had we not been redeemed. O oh, wonder of your humble care for us, O oh, love, O oh, charity beyond all telling, to ransom a slave you gave away your son. O oh, truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. O oh, happy fault that earned so great, so glorious a redeemer. O oh, truly blessed night, worthy alone to know the time and hour when Christ rose from the underworld. This is the night of which it is written, the night shall be as bright as day, dazzling is the night for me, and full of gladness. The sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes faults away, restores innocence to the fallen, and joy to mourners, drives out hatred, fosters concord and brings down the mighty. On this your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle, a solemn offering, the work of peace and of your servants' hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. But now we know the praises of this pillar, which glowing fire ignites for God's honor. A fire into many flames divided, yet never dimmed by sharing of its light. 
For it is fed by melting wax, drawn out by mother bees, to build a torch so precious. Oh, truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wed to those of earth, and divine to the human. Therefore, O Lord, we pray you that this candle, hallowed to the honor of your name, may persevere undimmed to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star, the one morning star who never sets, Christ your Son, who coming back from death's domain has shed his peaceful light on humanity and lives and reigns forever and ever. So we're going to put the lights on now, and if you'd like to be um, seated for the readings from the Old Testament, you can then uh, extinguish your candles. We'll use them again later on during the renewal of our baptismal promises. Can I just ask, um, is there a liturgy booklet for this evening? Because um, uh, it's a long... It's a lot, long time to listen without... If you haven't got a copy of Magnificat or the Sunday Missal, you'll need a, a liturgy booklet, won't you? So, with the, um, with the readings in. So, if, um, if you would help Sandra give them out. Can you help Sandra give, give out the booklets, please? So, you just uh, go over there. I think they were in the foyer. I think they were out anyway. there well they're not there <laughs> okay so if if one of you comes to the front if we have one of you at the front and you, you work towards the middle so if you come up to the front walk to it walk work towards the middle If, you, if, you, if you've got the Magnificat, you don't need it. So has everybody got one now, if you haven't got one? 
Please, you have to go over to the other side. Uh, okay, then. The work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was a formless void. There was darkness over the deep, and God's spirit hovered over the water. God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw that light was good, and God divided light from darkness. God called light day, and darkness he called night. Evening came and morning came, the first day. God said, let there be a vault in the waters to divide the waters in two. And so it was. God made the vault, and it divided the waters above the vault from the waters under the vault. God called the vault heaven. Evening came and morning came, the second day. God said, let the waters under heaven come together into a single mass and let dry land appear. And so it was. God called the dry land earth and the mass of waters seas and God saw that it was good. God said, let the earth produce vegetation, seed bearing plants and fruit trees bearing fruit with their seed inside on the earth. And so it was. The earth produced vegetation, plants bearing seed in their several kinds, and trees bearing fruit with their seed inside, their, inside in their several kinds. God saw that it was good. Evening came and morning came, the third day. God said, let there be lights in the vault of heaven to divide day from night and let them indicate festivals, days, and years. Let them be lights in the vault of heaven to shine on the earth. And so it was. God made the two great lights, the greater light to govern the day, the smaller light to govern the night and the stars. God set them in the vault of heaven to shine on the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to divide light from darkness. God saw that it was good. Evening came, and morning came, the fourth day. Multiply and fill the waters of the seas, and let the birds multiply upon the earth. Evening came, and morning came, the fifth day. God said, let the earth produce every kind of living creature, cattle, reptiles, and every kind of wild beast. And so it was. God made every kind of wild beast, every kind of cattle, and every kind of land reptile. God saw that it was good. God said, let us make man in our own image, in the likeness of ourselves, and let them be masters of the fish of the sea, the birds of heaven, the cattle, all the wild beasts and all the reptiles that crawl upon the earth. God created man in the image of himself. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying to them, Be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth and conquer it. Be masters of the fish of the sea, the birds of heaven, and all living animals on the earth. God said, See, I give you all the seed-bearing plants that are upon the whole earth, and all the trees with seed-bearing fruit. This shall be your food. To all wild beasts, all birds of heaven, and all living reptiles on the earth, I give all the foliage of plants for food. And so it was. God saw all that he had made, 
and indeed it was very good. Evening came and morning came, the sixth day. Thus heaven and earth were completed with all their array. On the seventh day, God completed the work he had been doing. He rested on the seventh day after all the work he had been doing. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works, may those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvellous than the world creation in the beginning, in, ex, except that at the end of the ages, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. God put Abraham to the test. Abraham, Abraham, he called. Here I am, he replied. Take your son, God said, your only child, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, there you shall offer him as a burnt offering on a mountain I will point out to you. Rising early next morning, Abraham saddled his ass and took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. He chopped wood for the burnt offering and started on his journey to the place God had pointed out to him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. Then Abraham said to his servants, Stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship and come back to you. 
Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering, loaded it, loaded it on Isaac, and carried in his own hands the fire and the knife. Then the two of them set out together. Isaac spoke to his father Abraham. Father, he said. Yes, my son, he replied. Look, he said, here are the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, My son, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering. Then the two of them went on together. When they arrived at the place God had pointed out to him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood. Then he bound his son Isaac and put him on the altar on top of the wood. Abraham stretched out his hand and seized the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, he said. I am here, he replied. Do not raise your hand against the boy, the angel said. Do not harm him, for now I know you fear God. You have not refused me your son, your only son. Then, looking up, Abraham saw a ram caught by its horns in a bush. Abraham took the ram and offered it as a burnt offering in place of his son. Abraham called this place, the Lord provides. And hence the saying today, on the mountain, the Lord provides. The angel of the Lord called Abraham a second time from heaven. I swear by my own self, it is the Lord who speaks. Because you have done this, because you have not refused me your son, your only son, I will shower blessings on you. I will make your descendants as many as the stars of heaven and the grains of sand on the seashore. Your descendants shall gain possession of the gates of their enemies. All the angels of the earth, all the nations of the earth shall bless themselves by your descendants as a reward for your obedience. The word of the Lord. Preserve me, God. I take refuge in you. O Lord, it is you who are my portion and cup. It is you yourself who are my prize. I keep the Lord ever in my sight. Since he is at my right hand, I shall stand firm. Preserve me, O God. I take refuge in you. And so my heart rejoices, my soul is glad. Even my body shall rest in safety. For you will not leave my soul among the dead, nor let your beloved know decay. Dear God, I take refuge in you. You will show me the path of life, the fullness of joy in your presence. At your right hand, happiness forever. Let us pray. O God, supreme Father of the faithful, who increased the children of your promise by pouring out the grace of adoption throughout the whole world, and who through the Paschal mystery make your servant Abraham father of nations, as once you swore, grant, we pray, that your peoples may enter worthily into the grace to which you call them, through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me so? Tell the sons of Israel to march on. For yourself, raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea, and part it for the sons of Israel, 
to walk through the sea on dry ground. I, for my part, will make the heart of the Egyptians so stubborn that they will follow them. So shall I win myself glory at the expense of Pharaoh, of all his army, his chariots, his horsemen. And when I have won glory for myself at the expense of Pharaoh and his chariots and his army, the Egyptians will learn that I am the Lord. Then the angel of the Lord, who marched at the front of the army of Israel, changed station and moved to their rear. The pillar of cloud changed station from the front to the rear of them and remained there. It came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. The cloud was dark and the night passed without the armies drawing any closer the whole night long. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove back the sea. The waters parted, and the sons of Israel went on dry ground right into the sea, walls of water to right and to left of them. The Egyptians gave chase. After them they went right into the sea, all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. In the morning watch, the Lord looked down on the army of the Egyptians from the pillar of fire and of cloud, and threw the army into confusion. He so clogged their chariot wheels that they could scarcely make headway. Let us flee from the Israelites, the Egyptians cried. The Lord is fighting for them against the Egyptians. Stretch out your hand over the sea, the Lord said to Moses, that the waters may flow back on the Egyptians and their chariots and their horsemen. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and as day broke, the sea returned to its bed. The fleeing Egyptians marched right into it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the very middle of the sea. The returning waters overwhelmed the chariots and the horsemen of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them was left. But the sons of Israel had marched through the sea on dry ground, walls of water to right and to left of them. That day, the Lord rescued Israel from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. Israel witnessed the great act that the Lord had performed against the Egyptians, and the people venerated the Lord. They put their faith in the Lord and in Moses, his servant. It was then that Moses and the sons of Israel sang this song in honor of the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, glorious his triumph. I will sing to the Lord, glorious his triumph. I will sing to the Lord, glorious his triumph. Horse and rider he has thrown in my strength, my song, my salvation. This is my God, and I extol him, my Father's God and I give him praise. I will sing to the Lord, glorious his triumph. The Lord is a warrior. 
the Lord is his name. The chariots of Pharaoh he hurled into the sea. The flower of his army is drowned in the sea. The deeps hide them, they sank like a stone. I will sing to the Lord, glorious his triumph. Your right hand, Lord, glorious in its power. Your right hand, Lord, has shattered the enemy. In the greatness of your glory, you crushed the foe. I will sing to the Lord, glorious his triumph. You will lead your people and plant them on your mountain, the place, O Lord, where you have made your home, the sanctuary, Lord, which your hands have made. The Lord will reign forever and ever. I will sing to the Lord, glorious his triumph. Let us pray. O oh God, whose ancient wonders remain undimmed in splendor even in our day, for what, you, for, for what you once bestowed on a single people, freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution by the power of your right hand, now you bring about as a salvation of the nations through the waters of rebirth. Grant, we pray, that the whole world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, O come to the water, all you who are thirsty. Though you have no money, come. Buy corn without money and eat, and at no cost wine and milk. Why spend money on what is not bread, your wages on what fails to satisfy? Listen, listen to me, and you will have good things to eat and rich food to enjoy. Pay attention, come to me. Listen, and your soul will live. With you, I will make an everlasting covenant out of the favors promised to David. See, I have made of you a witness to the peoples, a leader and a master of the nations. See, you will summon a nation you never knew. Those unknown will come hurrying to you for the sake of the Lord your God of the Holy One of Israel, who will glorify you. Seek the Lord while he is still to be found. Call to him while he is still near. Let the wicked man abandon his way, the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn back to the Lord, who will take pity on him, to our God, who is rich in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, my ways not your ways. It is the Lord who speaks. Yes, the heavens are as high above earth as my ways are above your ways, my thoughts above your thoughts. Yes, as the rain and the snow come down from the heavens and do not return without watering the earth, making it yield and giving growth to provide seed for the sower and bread for the eating. So the word that goes from my mouth does not return to me empty without carrying out my will and succeeding in what it was sent to do. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. With, With joy you will draw water from the wells, wells of salvation. Truly God is my salvation. I trust, I shall not fear. For the Lord is my strength, my song. He became my savior. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. 
With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Give thanks to the Lord. Give praise to his name. Make his mighty deeds known to the peoples. Declare the greatness of his name. With, With joy, joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Sing a psalm to the Lord, for he has done glorious deeds. Make them known to all the earth. People of Zion, sing and shout for joy, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. With joy you'll draw water from the wells of salvation. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, sole hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveiled the mysteries of this present age, graciously increase the longing of your people for only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So we'll light the candles now on the, the, the altar. Light the candles on the altar. Go on, light them. So we're going to um, sing the uh, the Gloria now. So. <laughs> sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Let us pray. O oh God, who made this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption, so that renewed in body and mind, we may render you undivided surface, service to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized in his death. 
In other words, when we were baptized, we went into the tomb with him and joined him in death. So that as in Christ sense. was raised from the dead of the Father's glory, we too might live a new life. If, in union with Christ, we have in imitated his death, we shall also imitate him in his resurrection. We must realize that our former selves have been crucified with him to destroy this sinful body and to free us from the slavery of sin. When a man dies, of course, he has finished with sin. But we believe that having died with Christ, we shall return to life with him. Christ, as we know, having been raised from the dead, will never die again. Death has no power over him anymore. When he died, he died once for all, for all, to, for all sin, so his life now is life with God. And in that way, you too must consider yourselves to be dead to sin, but alive for God in Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <coughs> alleluia, alleluia. Uh, uh, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love has no end. Let the sons of Israel say, his love has no end. Hallelujah. The Lord's right hand has triumphed. His right hand raised me up. I shall not die, I shall live and recount his deeds. Hallelujah. They're not a light. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the work of the Lord, a marvel in our eyes. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. On the first day of the week, at the first sign of dawn, the women went to the tomb with the spices they had prepared. They found that the stone had been rolled away from the tomb, but on, on entering, discovered that the body of the Lord Jesus was not there. As they stood there, not knowing what to think, two men in brilliant clothes suddenly appeared at their side. Terrified, the women lowered their eyes, but the two men said to them, why look among the dead for someone who is alive? He's not here. He has risen. Remember what he told you when he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man had to be handed over into the power of sinful men and be crucified, 
and rise again on the third day. And they remembered his words. When the women returned from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the others. The women were Mary of Magdala, Joanna, and Mary the mother of James. The other women with them also told the apostles. But this story of theirs seemed pure nonsense, and they did not believe them. Peter, however, went running to the tomb. He bent down and saw the binding cloths, but nothing else. He then went back home amazed at what had happened. The Gospel of the Lord. You might be seated, I'll say a few words now. I'm not going to say very much, but just I feel that if when we participate in these beautiful liturgies of the Easter Triduum, we we're giving you know pray we're giving praise praise to God, but it really strengthens our faith, really strengthens our faith um, when we read the Word of God, we hear the Word of God. This is why I wanted the booklets given out so that you can, you know, follow, follow the reading of the Word of God. It strengthens our faith. The more we read the Word of God, the more our faith uh, will, be, will be strengthened. And certainly, we've, you know, the last three uh, liturgies of today, good fr- yesterday, Good Friday, and uh, Monday, Thursday, we've, we've uh, read a, a lot uh, of Scripture. And uh, if you go back to Palm, Palm Sunday as well, uh, we've, we've done a great deal of scripture, read, read a great deal of scripture. And of course, this is, the, is our, the record of our salvation. This is the, you know, um, the deposit of faith, the record of salvation in, in the word of God. Uh, and so when we read it uh, with, with, with uh, openness, um, it, it deepens our faith, it strengthens our faith. I just, um, the thought occurred to me during the service, uh, our faith is so beautiful. Uh, our, our faith, our Catholic faith, is so beautiful, um, and uh, we're so graced, we're so privileged to have been baptized into it, brought up in it uh, by our parents. Some of us, some of you, are converts. Uh, it's so great that you uh, responded to that invitation of the Lord to become a Catholic. And uh, I just feel sorry for people, <laughs> you know, uh, who don't who haven't received that uh, enlightenment yet uh, uh, of the truth. The fullness of truth is in the Catholic, is in the Catholic Church. We have the riches uh, of the deposit of faith and uh, the fullness of that faith. It's beautiful and we're so blessed. And uh, so, and, and Lent, you know, is such a lovely time. I wish I could go back to the beginning of Lent. I don't know how you, how you feel, but... I always feel this that during Holy Week. I wish I could go back and start again and really <laughs> persevere and do, do a bit better, than I, maybe a lot better than, than I've done. Um, but um, uh, it's important, isn't it, Lent? To, we, we, don't, we will only appreciate these beautiful uh, liturgies of Holy Week if we really enter into the spirit of Lent, into that, you know, embrace its penitential character. So if we embrace the penitential character of Lent, then we're going to feel that peace and that joy and that love uh, uh, joy, joy, during Holy Week, during these beautiful liturgies. Uh, it's, you know, God's grace is going to touch us in, in a new way. Uh, we're, going to go on, we're going to go deeper into our faith, deeper into the mysteries of Christ, uh, which are transforming us from glory to glory. And that's what God is doing. You know, when, we, when we attend these liturgies, and we're in God, living, and we're in state of grace. Then we're being transformed from glory to glory. And uh, this liturgy is, is uh, and, and the grace of it, and the Eucharist, of course, uh, the, the presence of God in the Eucharist uh, is transforming us uh, from glory to glory. We're being transfigured by God's grace uh, and being prepared for eternal life. Uh, and that's it. You know, we're being prepared for eternal life, so that um, for the for the person who uh, you know, he's, he's grown in virtue and holiness and has been 
transformed by the Eucharist, by the Mass, uh, by prayer, by the Word of God, then the, 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 the journey from death to eternal life is, is just a, it's a, it's a transition which is, is you know, uh, natural, um, beautiful, not, pain, not painful. And um, so we want, to, we want to be like, we want to be those people, don't we, uh, that are going to be ready, uh, transfigured uh, for eternal life. Uh, so the wonderful sacraments of the Catholic Church, the, the, the Holy Mass, the Eucharist, Holy Communion, the real presence of Jesus, what we celebrated last on Monday, Thursday, uh, the Mass of the Lord's Supper, remembering the Last Supper, the first Mass, which, is be, which we celebrate every day and, and every Sunday, of course. And um, let's remember what a beautiful gift the Mass is. Not, never take it for granted. Never become cool or indifferent towards it. It's such an awesome gift, these sacred mysteries, where, where the, the, pre the, uh, the events of, that we celebrate this evening of 2,000 years ago become present in the Eucharist, become present on the sanctuary. Jesus, his saving death becomes present to us. His saving resurrection become present to us at, ev at every Mass, and we receive him we see, uh, in, in his risen life. So the resurrection then gives us great hope, doesn't it? Uh, that's why we, we hope, we have hope, we don't despair, we're not people of, of uh, you know, uh, despair. Important thing, to become a saint is our goal, is our number one goal. Not to become a saint is, is, is a disaster. You know? it's God's plan is for us to become saints, because everyone in heaven is a saint. So remember that, uh, if you want to go to heaven, <laughs> you want to become a saint. Um, so at least we want to die in God's grace. Um, so um, you, we have to die in God's grace to go there. Um, we may have to, we have to, we have to do, a, do a little detour in purgatory, or maybe a long detour in purgatory. Um, but um, our goal is heaven, and that everything in our life is 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 orientated towards that. Let's not be distracted. And this is the problem with the world; it doesn't it doesn't accept that that our goal is is, is sal eternal salvation, eternal life, uh, and we're being continually tempted by the world, the flesh, and the devil from that goal, I mean, distracted. The life is full of distractions uh, and temptations, but we have to be single-minded and determined and persevere. Uh, and uh, that means that some people will not like us um, because, uh, because if we have that single-minded determination to be true to our faith, then, um, then some, you know, at, at times people will, will perhaps um, take exception to us, and, uh, but we have to stick to our Stick to our guns, as they say, and persevere in this beautiful faith. And uh, we thank God then for, for, um, for Jesus, for his love, for his teaching, his preaching, his miracles, his, his, uh, his death on the cross, his suffering and death on the cross, that he died for you, for your sins and for my sins. And we thank God that he, he raised him to new life uh, on the third day so that we... Uh, if we persevere in that faith, can be with him in heaven forever in total, uh, absolute bliss and happiness. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We haven't got anyone to be baptised, which is uh, yeah, disappointing, and um, or to be confirmed, or to be, um, but anyway, maybe next year, please God, there'll be someone or, or, um, next year who's going to be received into the church and confirmed or even baptised, and that'd be lovely. So let's, let's pray about that, and uh, maybe think of someone, uh, let's focus on someone we can pray for, um, who we'd like to, uh, who think the Lord's calling into the church. Okay, so um, I'm just going to turn to the, to the right page in here. In fact, we can have that book, come up with that book now.
Would you like to stand there, please? This is it. Let us pray. O oh God, who by invisible power accomplish a wondrous effect through sacramental signs and in many ways have prepared water, your creation, to show forth the grace of baptism. O oh God, whose spirit in the first moments of the world's creation hovered over the waters so that the very substance of water would even then take to itself the power to sanctify. O oh God, who by the outpouring of the flood foreshadowed regeneration, so that from the mystery of, of one and the same element of water would come an end to vice and a beginning of virtue. O oh God, who caused the children of Abraham to pass dry shod through the Red Sea, so that the chosen people, set free from slavery to Pharaoh, would prefigure the people of, of the baptized. O God, whose son, baptized by John in the waters of the Jordan, was anointed with the Holy Spirit as he hung upon the cross, gave forth, gave forth water from his side uh, along with blood, and after his resurrection, commanded his disciples, go forth, teach all nations, baptizing them, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Turn now to the um, other, the, 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 the brief one, uh, the shorter the version now. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he has created, which will be sprinkled upon us um, uh, at the memorial of our baptism. May he graciously renew us that we may remain faithful to the Spirit whom we have received. Lord God, in your mercy, be present to your people who keep vigil on this most sacred night and for us who recall the wondrous work of our creation and the still greater work of our redemption. Gr graciously bless this water for you created water to make the fields fruitful you also made water the instrument of your mercy. For through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water the prophets proclaimed the new covenant you were to enter upon with the human race. And last of all, through water, which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter have received their baptism. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So I'm going to fill up this you have to be patient since this is quite slow
So you're now going to renew your baptismal promises. So if we'd like to turn to those, please. Bring the, the, uh, the, the book out now. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, and his works, I'm promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. I'm going to do the second, um, I'm leaving the first three out and going on to the second one. And so I ask you, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? I do. Do you renounce the law of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? And may, and may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestow on us forgiveness of our sins, Keep us by his grace in, in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. If you, uh, yes, we should have lit, lit the candles, but let's light them before, uh, before I give you the, uh, the, the, the blessing with the water. So I want, want to light your candles now. I'll take it back. So if you go and light, can you go and light the, the candles? Just take your candle with you and light, light them off the candle. Thank you. So, are we going to sing now as I uh, sprinkle the water? Play the music. No? Okay. Bless you.
So I believe it's the, the prayers of intercession now. So we have the prayers, our prayers of intercession. On this most blessed of all nights, when our Lord Jesus passed from death to life, we make our prayers to God, our Father, that we too will pass over from the death of sin to the new life of grace. We pray for the Church, for Pope Francis and all religious leaders who are peacemakers. May their words be heard as they plead for peace in Ukraine, Yemen, Somalia, Ethiopia, Syria, and other conflict areas of our troubled world. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who do not know the risen Lord. May their minds and hearts be open to receive the good news that Jesus is risen from the dead. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the marginalized and those in distress. May their sorrow be turned into joy. And may all Christians, through the power of the resurrection, give them renewed hope for the future. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. The Holy Father's intention for the month of April. We pray for health care workers who serve the sick and the elderly, especially in the poorest countries. May they be adequately supported by governments and local communities. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our families and everyone whom we know and love. May our risen Lord watch over, protect, and bless them this Easter and for the rest of their lives. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who are sick housebound or in hospital, especially Bridget Roberts at this time. May they see that their suffering is an invitation by Christ to share in his glory. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the faithful departed, especially those we now remember. that having shared in the cross, they may also know the joy of resurrection. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Our Father loves us unceasingly. Confident in that love, we offer our own intercessions to him. We bring these and all our prayers to Mary, the mother of our risen Lord. Hail Mary, Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Father, hear the prayers we offer with all our hearts so that the message of Easter may be with us always for Jesus our Lord now and forever. Amen. I'd like to be seated. You can extinguish your candles now, thank you. And we're going to have the offertory procession.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, we ask you, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may, by the working of your power, bring us to, to the healing of eternity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim your own Lord, but on this night, above all, to lord you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people, exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to God, unite and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Patrick, our Bishop, and all those who hold to the truth 
hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, remember Lord your servants and all, gathered, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for, re for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred night of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you, also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you've chosen. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of, of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving pa of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension to heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you've given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace.
Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Saviour's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Agnus Dei, qui toris peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui toris peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, Quitolis peccata mundi, dona nobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that ye should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life.
communion antiphon. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us keep the feast with the unleavened bread of purity and truth. Alleluia. Act of Spiritual Communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as being already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
can we say the soul of Christ thanksgiving prayer now after Holy Communion? Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, hear me. Within thy wounds, hide me. Suffer me not to be separated from thee. From the malicious enemy, defend me. In the hour of my death, call me. And bid me come to thee, that with thy saints I may praise thee forever and ever. Amen. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this paschal sacrament one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just to be seated very briefly, just to say thank you very much to everyone who's assisted uh, with, this, with this evening. Thank you very much again to the altar service. I did very well again. And thank you very much to all the readers, read so well. So, and um, thank you very much to the music ministry, to Kirk and to Kay. And uh, it's lovely to have our music ministry. And uh, to the ladies, the, the lovely flowers as well, beautiful flowers that we've got here. Uh, it's nice to see these beautiful flowers back. And to everyone who's helped clean the church and prepare it. And to everyone who's assisted this evening, sacristans and and the, the, the welcomers, it's very much appreciated. Thank you for your service, Joe. Uh, okay, th th thank you very much, Joe. It's, um, and of course, now things very rarely, rarely go perfectly, so we always learn as we're going, you know, uh, as we're going along, so uh, it's good, and these things keep us humble. Um, but um, uh, I think, yes, it was, um, but it was great that we've, um, you know, we've had a, a lovely liturgy, and uh, give thanks to God for that. So, yes, yeah, so the, the newsletters, and there's a lovely, well, plenty of newsletters, so please take one with you. Uh, they'll, they'll be out there uh, as, as you're leaving. And um, I think that's it. I wish you all a happy and a holy Easter. Christ is risen. And what do you, what, and what do you say? Hallelujah. And uh, he's risen indeed. That's it. He's risen indeed. He's truly, or he's truly risen. I've written something about that in the, news, in the newsletter anyway. So would you like to stand? I wonder if the blessing's in there. You, know, you can hold it. You need muscles to hold this book. It's the, there we go. You stand there. The Lord be with you. Pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the, pro with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a, to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast, come, come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Alleluia, alleluia. And I, I didn't forget that we have a, 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 you know, a few people at home, ho hopefully, God <laughs> watching us this evening. And uh, so all that, that blessing was for you as well. I did have you in mind when I was celebrating the Mass. Thank you. So I'm going to remind everyone that there's an offertory prayer behind here. Whatever goes into the offertory prayer. Good night, just remind everyone that there's an offertory prayer behind here. Whatever goes into it is our situation. Goes into my back pocket, yeah. Okay. Thank you, thank you very much, Joe. That's a really good one. So.